There has been an Antifa versus furry shootout in Portland. Oh, wait, what? Oh, in Portland. Okay, that explains everything. <laughs> it's like all of that. What the fuck? In Portland. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. And uh, we'll start this off by saying that Portland is a scary place. Mm. And it's, it's, it's no joke to say. And thanks, Frank, frankly, to a lot of the journos on the ground and people elsewhere who have been reporting on what mm-hmm. people have been up to. Is, I mean, this, is it the degeneracy capital of the world right now? Would that be a I, fair title? Probably. I mean, it's, it's the open terrorism capital of the world for the West. I mean, mm. I mean, sure, you've got, you know, Somalia or whatever as well, but for the Western countries, I mean, where else do you just have open terrorism going on 24-7 and everyone's fine with it? And to list that, we'll start off with this Vice France, article. France, maybe? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start off with this article from Vice, because you may remember there was a guy who wore a Trump hat in Portland, and some guy premeditated turned up and just shot him in the back of the head. Yeah. And then Vice were like, well, we've got to get his side of the story. That's an innocent man who didn't do nothing. And as they read with the headline, a man linked to killing at Portland's protest. Portland pro- there was no protest. He was walking home. He just walked out and shot him. Says he acted in self-defense. So let's scroll down so we can remember the dude's face. Piece of S. And he ended up fleeing and then in a shootout with police. He's got an anti-far black power fist yep. tattooed to his neck. Literally gave an interview to Vice. Vice were like, I, he said, I didn't do nothing. And Vice were like, we believe you. And this is the state of left-wing media. And then mm-hmm. ran off, got in a shootout with the police and died. Goodbye. Don't care. Well, there's some justice in the world. But that's that's the level of, uh, let's say, media reporting. And then we'll just, you know, open murders going on because of political reasons, right? We'll go to the next one and we can see uh, fire bombings instead. Oh, trying, oh fabulous. Frank, that great Western custom. Trying to burn police officers alive. Fantastic. This is perfectly normal. But if we carry on, that's not the only one because this one, the guy actually set himself on fire, but this one as well, we've demonstrated many a time. You can see here, someone comes out, throws a molotov at the police, tries to burn them alive. And they just rug us off. Just going on constantly. I think there were like four or something during the summer of love that were thrown at police officers. Block was... party atmosphere, was it? Yeah, just going on. If we go to the next one, we can also see the IED of tolerance going off as <laughs> well. Do you remember this? No, no. I so don't this was that. at the courthouse. Some guy threw an IED. And you see, it's just nothing. And then we can't play the clip, but it just, <laughs> just goes off. Everyone's a bit shocked. Like, even the protesters all go silent. I'm like, what the hell was that? Because they, they didn't realize, well, presumably they didn't realize how far they were getting that day. So that's the idea of tolerance. And then we go on, and we have just uh, another shooting that has taken place in Portland. I mean, if this is not a scary place, I don't know what to say. Yeah. And this is the, the story here. So Andy says here, Last night, there was a mass shooting in Portland at Normandale Park, where armed Antifa and far-left militants were gathering for direct action. One female is deceased and five others are injured. Antifa are claiming the shooting was politically motivated. They're trying to claim it was the right wing. That's, okay. that's uh, their perspective. So of it wasn't the terrorism of tol- tolerance, it was the bad people. No, so all this terrorism of tolerance has gone on. I, I love that time. I'm going to start using that more. Good. And uh, then there has been another shooting, and then we'll go through the details here. So if we go to the next one, we can see Andy reporting on this some more. And again, Andy, you know, of course, being the best journalist for this sort of thing, says, uh, police released an update to the press, uh, a release about the mass shooting involving Antifa. They say investigation, quote, indicates this incident started with a confrontation between an armed homeowner and armed protesters. Antifa left the scene and won't cooperate. Wait, so do you reckon this was like a, um, this is like that BLM protest with the McCluskeys that but went bad? Is that what this sounds like? That's what it initially sounded like. Okay. And uh, maybe you don't like Andy. Maybe you're like, oh, whoa, 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 come on. Andy's a far right um, guy, which... If only you knew more about Andy, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go to the uh, the New York Times instead. Uh, the, the very okay, another far right outlet, of course, and and we'll see what they had to have there. So they say the Portland Police Bureau said a woman was dead, and when officers arrived on Saturday night at the scene in a neighborhood of Rose City Park, of course, what Antifa local cell is named after, two men and three other women were taken to a nearby hospital. Police said in the shooting, which occurred at the start of a protest. <sighs> that word is eternally cursed, mm. appeared to be, quote, a confrontation between armed protesters and an armed homeowner, Lieutenant Nathan Shepard said by phone on Sunday. Quote, that's what the preliminary investigation is indicating. The crime scene was, quote, extremely chaotic. The police said in a statement on Sunday, and quote, a number of witnesses were uncooperative with responding officers. Most people on scene left without talking to the police. Most people on scene being anti members. Mm-hmm. People were like, well, those are pigs. They're turds. Uh, therefore, we're not going to talk to them. Even though your own people have been shot, you're just going to leave. Mm. 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 One of the victims, Dudja Beck, who turns 39 on Monday, and who was contacted through her attorney, said she was shot twice. So she survived. 
Beck said she was part of a volunteer motorcade group that was working to set up a safety plan and reroute traffic a block or two ahead of the marchers. We were not part of the protest, she said, adding no one in the motorcade group was harmed. Was armed. Yeah, it's it's madness, right? Volunteer motorcade group that reroutes traffic, right? They are trying to set themselves up as a government. Here. We'd, but also we were just peaceful, entirely peaceful, just moving on. I was like, okay, okay, that's that's what your perspective is, but we'll keep it in mind. Okay. Yeah, they were also... We can only take her word for it. Uh, okay, so okay. We'll, we'll start there. Yep. Beck, who was shot, said a man came screaming uh, that they were violent terrorists and repeatedly calling them a misogynist, uh, calling them a misogynist vulgarity. What, like woman? So... <laughs> You woman. <laughs> the man said they were the people responsible for violence in the city, Miss Beck recounted, adding that he said, quote, if I see you come past my house, I will shoot you. People in the group tried to calm the man down, but Miss Beck looked away from him towards one of her friends. That's when he started shooting, she said. Wow. So this is the recording of events. Man turns up, says you're responsible for violence. They're like, oh, shut up. Let's let's be polite and say that that's what it was. And then he pulled out a gun just out of nowhere and just started shooting Wow, them. how unreasonable. Well, yeah, it is terrible. Like you shouldn't just go out. And is shoot that actually what happened? Is that uh, can we rely on this testimony? Well, we'll have some more details coming forward. Okay. But uh, I'm going to take that word for it because it's yep. as much as we have for that aspect. And yeah, sure, okay. So yeah, bad. But did you not follow the far that start of that sentence where he's like, "Well, you guys are responsible for the terrorism." Mm. I wonder why he thinks that. Mayor Ted Wheeler has something to say on this, of okay. course. Quote: While many of the details of last night's shooting near Noman Dale Park are unclear. We do know one thing is for sure. Our community is dealing with the sadness of another senseless act of gun violence. Mayor, Mr. Wheeler. No, this is just gun violence. Yes, and Molotov violence, and IED violence. It's just, uh, it's just the weapons themselves are jumping up. And Part and parcel living in a big city, Callum. Just, just these Molotovs keep making themselves and throwing them. No, this is not gun violence or knife violence. It's not the inanimate object. Mm. It's extremist violence. Mm. I mean, we have an example, multiple, throughout the Summer of Love, of the Antifa guys engaging in terrorism. Far left violence. Okay, and then we'll take the word for it. This guy turns up. He's a far right guy, and he shoots the Antifa guys for what they've done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, well, he's been radicalized by the terrorism in his city. This isn't good. This is not gun violence, though. Mm -hmm. this, this is extremist violence, let's say, from two people, and extremists breed extremists. So this is exactly the same situation you see around the world. Well, when you see, as we've as been, has been documented quite well by Andy Note, the city establishment literally doing nothing, and you could argue aiding and abetting terrorism for years, um, and then you're surprised when you get an extremist vigilante? Yeah, pop up. I, I mean, it is terrible, really? but this is the thing: if you if you tolerate extremism, specifically just and open terrorism taking place, of course, lots of people are going to be radicalized by that. And yeah, this is the bed you've made for yourself. Mm. If you had actually dealt with the extremism at the source, you wouldn't allow them to then breed more extremism. Mm -hmm. Moving on, though, let's go to the next link so we can see. Uh, apparently, the shooter was a furry and uh, was identified as a right wing furry by. Furry comrades in Antifa, which <laughs> well, he was living in Portland. Oh, oh God, <laughs> <laughs> it's just just the aspect there of that is God mad. And if we go to the next one, we can also see the police reporting on this, saying Portland police has formally named Benjamin Smith as the suspect in the mass shooting involving Antifa. They say evidence was removed from the scene and are asking for cooperation from the witnesses. The witnesses being the Antifa guys who refused to talk to the police. And apparently have removed evidence from the scene. Wait, so he's hospitalized in serious condition, so presumably he was also shot in this shootout. Yes. Yeah. So the the, the so way he was shot by the unarmed motorcade. Um oh, sorry, this isn't making sense <laughs> to me anyway. Do continue. Yeah, uh, so yeah, <laughs> Miss 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 Beck doesn't seem to have been telling the full truth there. Mm. But the we'll take it as it is, which is that he turns up, he's unreasonable, he shoots them, they shoot back. You no. Know, okay, Carl Rittenhouse situation if you want. <laughs> I, I look forward to Rose City Antifa saying Carl Rittenhouse did nothing wrong. Mm. But there's the evidence there of them also saying, well, the police saying that the evidence has been removed from the scene. And this isn't a surprise. If we go forward, you can see Andy also saying, this is routine for Antifa. Mm -hmm. And as you see, it's just, yep, a history of removing evidence. And as you can see, there are the statements there. And in those images, they say about, you know, keep your photos to a minimum and don't talk to the pigs. Your comrades have been shot. Some guy turns up and shoots your comrades and you're like, yeah, I'm not going to talk to the pigs. I'm not going to help. In fact, I'm not going to take pictures. I'm not going to do anything to help. Okay, well, let's see the vi one of the victims. So, Miss Beck, you may remember earlier. You see here. Mm -hmm. So, Dajay Irene Beck, an Antifa member who was shot at the Antifa versus neighbor shooting in Portland, is now instructing comrades to return the evidence they took from the homicide scene. Hmm. 
So that's an admission that they took stuff from the homicide scene. Mm. Oops. She says, if anyone removed anything from the crime scene, you need to hand it over now. I can help if you need help. You're hurting us if you took something and do not return it. Right, so it's an admission that has taken place. Guys were removing evidence from the scene. Well, which guys? The ones who weren't talking to the police, most likely. She's openly saying to her own comrades, I know it was you guys. Give the evidence back. I've been shot. You're hurting me. Mm. Too bad, lady. These are your comrades. They don't talk to the pigs. This is your worldview. This is the, this is the bed you've made for yourself in this crime. The people you have made friends with are bad people. I, I don't know what else to say. It's, yeah, of course they're not going to help you. If we move on, we can also see the fact that she being there, as Andy mentioned, with the crime shot, uh, the mugshot photo there, she's also been involved in riots with regards to no, all this. I, but I thought she was an unarmed, peaceful motorcade at right? Yeah, she was a peaceful volunteer for the unarmed motorcade. Who ended up in a mass shootout where the other guy ended up in hospital. How strange. Yeah, th this whole situation is terrible, but it's the case, again, of just, this is why you don't tolerate tr extremism breeding in your city. It ends up just endlessly spiraling into violence. Mm. If we continue, if we go to the next one, we can also see, apparently, the guy who uh, uh, shot the uh, the initiant, so the, the right-wing furry who turned mm -hmm. up, and we're going to call him, I suppose. He was shot by one of the members of Antifa. So Benjamin Jeffrey Smith, 43, allegedly confronted the participants at a racial justice demonstration on Saturday night before pulling out a handgun and shooting multiple people in the crowd. A member of the crowd shot Smith, who remains hospitalized in critical care. And the shooter is not named because, well, there's no need to. He's not being charged with a crime. He shot someone who was shooting at him. Yeah, absolutely. So, that's self-defense. Yeah, that's... um. Carl Rittenhouse did nothing wrong. I, say it. Just say it, for Christ's sake. If you... If, eh, there's no principles to these people, but... I look forward to the people realizing the car has nothing wrong and they're just lying to your face about it because they can't deal with mm -hmm. reality. So according to Smith's roommate, Christine Christensen, he had expressed anger over protests in Portland, people who are experiencing homelessness and COVID health restrictions in recent years. Smith also owned several guns, according to Christensen. So you have political extremists for the last four years. I mean, since Trump, I mean, mm -hmm. before Trump as well, a little bit, engaging in terrorism on a minor level, just threatening people, threatening their businesses, burning down random people's homes, random businesses, Starbucks, oh, we'll burn that. There's 10 apartment blocks above it, but don't worry about that. So do people's kids. Mm -hmm. Not important. And then they got to the point of trying to burn police officers alive with Molotovs. Then they started shooting random people in the street for wearing MAGA hats. And then they're IEDing the courthouse. Right. Yeah. All that political extremism created other political extremists in this chap, this right-wing furry, as is being called turning up and then attacking you, as he said to the people at the protest, you know, you guys have caused all this, therefore he's angry with you, he's carried out his extremism. Again, terrible. But that's the thing. This is why you clamp down on this sort of terrorism from the get-go. If for no other reason than terrorism itself, but then the fact that it will just spiral and spiral, because it's a black hole of politics. Hmm. So what's the response? Any, any reflection? Any reflection whatsoever? Absolutely not from these guys. No, what are we, what are we playing? As you can see here, London 94, standing in solidarity with Portland. So they've done nothing wrong. They've never, ever, ever. And uh, now some guys attack them, who's also been uh, radicalized by the whole situation. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's cause for solidarity, comrades. Um, so who do they blame? Who do they blame? Uh, Trump. Oh. Oh. Ooh, rare, rare occasion. Oh, I, I, I missed on the, on the... Wow. Gosh, that's a first. Um, it's got to be the far right, though. Homo nationalism, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, no. Wait, they what? blame Andy, no. <laughs> okay. This is Andy, no's fault. So, as you can see here, this is uh, Andy pointing out that they have vandalized the Spanish War Memorial. So, they put up here saying, kill Andy, no. This isn't the only time they've done it. There's loads of other comments, of course, in which Andy Farah counts just like, yeah, I'd love to kill him. Andy, funnily enough, can't go back to his hometown. Big shock. Hmm. He's now living in exile. He's living here, actually, and in Break Britain. So. God save the Queen, Andy. <laughs> but there's... It's just no reflection. Right, you commit terrorism. Like, your group goes and commits terrorism on an endless basis, killing people, burning buildings, burning people, wrecking people's lives, mm -hmm. destroying a city, frankly. Mm. I mean, it is not a place anyone wants to visit anymore. No one ever talks about visiting it. Reporter reports on the terrorism and says, this bad. Shock. And then Mandy gets mad at the terrorism that he's seeing being reported on. I mean, let's just assume he was getting it from Andy's sources. And then becomes a terrorist himself. Andy No did this to us. No, that's not how this works. Uh, I mean, again, like it's, for the nonces out there, terrorism bad of all forms. But then the aspect of you being like, yeah, this is Andy No's fault. That is not thinking at all. Hmm. I mean, this is obviously just a scapegoat. The fact that right, we were absolutely awful to the point of killing people in the streets, 
and we look terrible for that, and we've radicalized people against us. Therefore, Andy No did this by saying we did it. Like, no. Yeah, no. Well, they see this all as an optics war. So they have all of their bought and paid for journalists who work at Vice and other platforms. So as Andy No has actually documented. First link, again, please, to make right. that point even more stark. <laughs> right. If we can, John, if we can get that first so link. So every time they get involved in something, they have a pet journalist who can go and interview one of them, tell their side of the story, and paint them as being these, oh, peaceful, loving, sort of anti Self defense. Yeah. And then uh, anyone who comes out against that, and it generally is only freelance investigative reporters like Andy No, who are not part of the establishment or the agenda, and they say, uh, actually, these guys are violent and dangerous, and they're throwing up bloody IEDs and Molotov cocktails. They're the, va the victims, because they're the villains, because they're making Antifa look bad in the optics war. That's mm. the way they see it. Again, terrible situation, but not surprised by it. I wouldn't be surprised if there are more of these situations, mm. because... <sighs> This is such like a, a milk toast take, but don't accept terrorism as normal. Is it, could we do that? Yeah. Could we try that. Mm -hmm. How about that for an idea? Anyway, that's the, that's the horrible situation that is Portland. The international embarrassment is the Americans. If you enjoyed that section from the podcast The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to subscribe to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the premium hangouts we sometimes do, this one between Carl and John, on why woke, woke remakes are absolutely awful. And if you want to follow Carl, you can also follow him on Getter at at Carl Benjamin on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.